welcome to the Adventure Together podcast. In today's episode, Guy Miller talks to Mark Job, the president of Moody Bible Institute and author of Unstuck, Out of Your Cave, Into Your Call. He is also the founding pastor of New Life Community Church, a Chicago-based ministry with 28 locations and over 7,000 people calling it their spiritual home. What for you have been some of the highlights and maybe some of the challenges and what are some of the things that you're thinking this is good we don't want to lose this lesson as we come out of lockdown we don't want to lose something of what we've learned in this last year so chicago like new york was hit big time and we're in the heart of chicago like we're not on the outskirts of chicago we're like right in the heart of chicago and when this crisis hit and we work in some our church works in some immigrant communities um, we work in some high-end communities where houses are you know 1.5 million dollars and then we work in communities where people don't speak English and are mo- mainly migrant especially Mexican and so one of our communities that we were working in called little village it's primarily a Mexican community uh, there were two ladies there a mother and a daughter that for about a decade had been feeding maybe about 100 people a week. You know, they would go to uh, restaurants, gather leftover food, put it in an old van, and they would go to the homes of seniors and single mothers, and they barely speak English, but this was their ministry. Well, when the pandemic hit, one of the things that surfaced is so many people needed food because they were being laid off from their jobs. And so they were overwhelmed by the demand. And so they came to our two of our pastors, my son, who's 27 years old, and one of the other pastors who leads our non-for-profit. And they said, hey, uh, we're overwhelmed. 500 people want food. And so they came together, my son and, and, and the other pastor, and said, what if we fed 1,000 people a week? Well, they were overwhelmed. Where would we get the food? How would that happen? Well, guy, let me tell you. That went from feeding 1,000 to 2,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 to 15,000 to 20,000. And currently, we've been feeding between 25 to 30,000 people a week. Listen, um, that's 1% of the city of Chicago because the city is 3 million people. Greater Chicago is 10 million We became the greatest food distribution. We fed 1.5 million people over the last 13 months. We become the greatest food distribution in the state of Illinois because the people of God said, here's a need. How do we meet it? And we can't just depend on being a service inside of our four walls. This is an extraordinary time to be followers of Jesus because there's so many people that are hurting full of anxiety, upset, lonely, disengaged. The church is at its best when we're in the midst of crisis. People are hurting all over the world. And this is, the the problem is that we've been disrupted in the way we're used to gathering people on Sunday and ministering to people in a service. But there have been extraordinary opportunities outside of the four walls of the church. In fact, through our food distribution, it led to, well, I, I could go on and tell you stories, but uh, a secular organization donating a building to us so that we could have a, a permanent food distribution. And we're doing this in Jesus' name. I awoke, I, I wake, awoke to the fact that God was doing something. I was on a Saturday, I still remember it. And our church building that normally has about 1,700 people in on for services. That's one of our main locations. I knew it was going to be empty the next day. And I'm in a, on Saturday with a, uh, probably 150 volunteers putting boxes of food into people's cars, praying for them, asking how they're doing spiritually, um, ministering to them. And I'm kind of complaining to God that the, the, the sanctuary is going to be closed. But the Lord opened up my eyes and said, look around. I saw 800 cars waiting in line 
300 people standing on the sidewalk, our people ministering and praying for them. And I realized we had just ministered to 4,000 people on a Saturday in our parking lot, most of whom are non-believers, double the amount that we would minister to on Sunday. And the Lord said, hey, open up your eyes. I'm working. It's just going to be different than what our normal work is. And I realize there's tons of opportunities and the church has always been resilient if we can break out of some of our boxes. To hear more from Mark as he talks about how his church are making a difference in a community terrorized by gang warfare, the challenge of online church and many other topics, simply search Adventure Together wherever you get your podcasts. You can also visit www.commission.global/podcast.